Good morning to all. Today we will discuss on the chest injuries. So let us see first what is a uh, chest and what are the areas which compose of the chest and what are the chest injuries. So the chest is a large exposed portion of the body that is vulnerable to impact injuries. Okay, that is very vulnerable when we uh, fall or when we uh, experience any motor vehicle accident or any type of uh, accidents. The chest is a large exposed area of our body, so it is a very vulnerable area because chest houses heart, lungs, and great vessels. Chest trauma is frequently life threatening. Okay, so uh, around our chest area, the organs, the vital organs which exist are the heart, lungs, and the great vessels, vessels of the heart. Okay, then so this is when we experience any chest trauma, then it will be very life-threatening problem then injuries to the thoracic cage and its content can restrict the heart's ability to pump blood or lungs ability to exchange air or oxygenated blood when we are uh, having any chest injury then we uh, what will happen the heart's ability to pump will not be uh, the heart will not be able to pump properly okay the blood and the lungs will not be able to exchange the gases the major danger with chest injuries is internal bleeding and organ puncture. Okay, or uh, then when chest injuries occur, then the most major danger that will be occurring are the internal bleeding. That means bleeding inside the organs. Then organ puncture will be there. There will be puncture or hole which will be made inside the organs. Then definition. Definition. Chest injury is any form of physical injury to the chest, including the ribs, heart, or the lungs. Okay, it will be any injury which involves the heart, lungs, or the ribs. Major chest injuries may occur alone or multiple other injuries. So, uh, chest uh, while we experience this chest injury, while any patient will occur, experience this chest injury, then what will happen? This they may uh, the heart may be involved alone the lungs may be involved alone or the ribs may be involved alone or the heart lungs and the ribs they may all be uh, involved so that is known as the multiple injuries okay then there are different types that is the specific chest injuries and specific pulmonary injuries. In the specific chest injuries, we have the blunt injuries and the penetrating, penetrating injuries. Then in the specific pulmonary injuries, we have the pneumothorax, hemothorax, cyclothorax, uh, chylothorax, sorry, and cardiac tamponade. So today we will discuss on the blunt injuries and the penetrating injuries under the specific chest injuries. Under the blunt injuries, we have the rib fracture, sternum fracture, flail chest, and pulmonary contusion. And in the penetrating injuries, we will have the gunshot, okay, when the patient has a gunshot and step by a knife, knife injury, okay. So the major causes of the chest injuries are motor vehicle accident, okay, when when the, the patient is having the motor vehicle accident then he might be having the chest injury also then when they fall from a height then there is a, when there is a blast injury or when there is a gunshot wound to the chest or stab or impalement wound when the patient is stabbed by a pointed object or a knife then chest compression Okay, when there is chest compression or crush injuries, when uh, we do the CPR in a very uh, for a very long time, the patient's chest might also be crushed, or the ribs might be crushed. That is known as the crush injuries. Then mechanism of chest injuries include the blunt trauma and the penetrating trauma. Blunt means from uh, there will be no. Uh, skin abrasion and there will be no involvement or going inside of the skin okay the injured part will be uh, maybe inside but it will not be shown from the outside then in the penetrating trauma it will be penetrated it will pass along the skin to the un under organs of the chest okay like gun shoot then knife uh, stab, uh, stabbing of the knife these are all under the blunt uh, penetrating traumas 
So the blunt trauma occurs when the body is struck by a blunt object, such as steering wheel. The external injury may appear minor, but the impact may cause severe life-threatening internal injuries, such as a ruptured spleen. Okay, so here it will not be shown from the outside. Okay, but in the inside, uh, inside the organs or like spleen, it uh, there may be causing the life-threatening internal injuries. It is difficult to identify the extent of damage because the symptoms may be generalized. Okay. And then the causes of um, blunt, blunt trauma are uh, motor vehicle accident while uh, while while the uh, while driving the patient may be uh, crashed on the uh, steering wheel but uh, it may be it may not be shown outside but it will be uh, severe or, or life threatening on the inside that uh, that means it may it may cause internal bleeding and all organ damage inside the organs. Then explosion, then falls, assault with a blunt object, then crush injury. So these all are the causes. Then in the mechanism of blunt injuries, we're having the deceleration or acceleration, then shearing and compression of thoracic structures. Let us first see what is acceleration deceleration. And the uh, injury resulting from collision between the body part and another object or body part while both are in motion. Okay, when uh, our body is crash crash with the another uh, moving object. Okay, so this is the mechanism. So first, uh, acceleration means a head suddenly accelerates. Okay, example a blow to the head and the stationary brain is struck by the accelerated cranium at the right uh, at the side of the blow. So a moving object enters our body which is unmoved and move. Okay. Uh, we are uh, we may be in a specific place. We may we may not be moving but uh, a, uh, an object will come to us and press our body part. Okay, so this is known as the acceleration. Then deceleration means a rapid moving skull is abruptly stopped while the brain continues forward and impacts directly below the side where the skull stops. So uh, in, uh, in simple terms, uh, deceleration means our moving body will crash another resting object. In the pathophysiology, due to the etiology or motor vehicle accident or fall from the height, so this may all uh, under the causes we have seen, Due to any of that causes, the blunt chest injuries will occur due to mechanism of acceleration, deceleration, shearing, and compression. Then, uh, due to the uh, acceleration, deceleration, shearing, or compression, the blunt chest injuries will occur. Then, next, what will happen? Hypoxia will be there due to the disruption of the airway, injury to the lungs, parenchyma, rib gas, and respiratory. So, oxygen will not be uh, available inside the airway when the airway is disrupted and if there is injury to the lungs parenchyma then uh, what will happen if there is no oxygen then hypovolemia from massive fluid loss from the great vessels cardiac rupture or hemothorax so when there is uh, involvement of the cardiac uh, heart and the great vessels what will happen there will be uh, loss of loss loss of lots of blood inside our body then what will happen the patient will be having hypovolemia that is low volume this pathogenic states frequently causes impaired ventilation and perfusion leading to the acute renal failure and hypovolemic shock and at last death if not treated properly so if the patient is having hypoxia with hypovolemia and all they will be they will be uh, in sh uh, they will they will be having the hypovolemic shock and after that if the patient is not treated properly then it may even lead to the death or acute renal failure also in the diagnostic we will do the physical examination chest x-ray ct scan cvc then clothing studies uh, then cross matching blood grouping okay then electrolytes oxygen saturation abg analysis then in the medical management airway will, airway should be provided immediately okay if the person is having the airway 
uh, injury, then airway should be provided immediately through the oxygen marks or through the if it is applicable or if it is not applicable, then uh, ventilate. Uh, the patient will the, will be done intubation and given ventilatory support. Then, uh, re-establishing fluid and negative, uh, the fluid which is lost by the body, like uh, in the form of electrolytes and in the form of blood, it will be given to the body for the replacement. Then, uh, next is a specific chest injuries like sternal and re fractures. So, uh, sternal and rib fractures are the most common chest injuries. Okay, so the fractures of rib one and two are called the hallmark of severe trauma. Then five and nine ribs are most commonly affected. In the clinical manifestation, we will see in the sternal fracture there will be anterior chest pain. Then overlying tenderness will be there. There will be pain to touch, ecchymosis and crepitus will be there ekymosis we all know that is a uh, bluish coloration of the skin okay then crepitus means uh, the bone uh, due to the fracture it will uh, produce like creaking sound okay then swelling and possible chest wall deformity the, uh, in the chest wall uh, it may be either having having the deformity uh, asymmetric it may be either asymmetrical or it may be there may be swelling also and under the rib fractures, what are the uh, manifestations? We will see. We will see pain at the side of the injury. Okay, then pain at the ribs, where whether it may be in the first, second, third, or fifth, or the ninth rib, but it uh, there will be pain at the side of the injury. Then uh, the person will be having shallow breathing. Okay, then localized tenderness and crepitus on palpation and auscultation. The same thing, crepitus will be there, tenderness will be there, and splinting of the chest. So, uh, this means the chest will not be able to move, it will be very rigid. Then, uh, under the diagnosis, we'll see, uh, we'll do the history collection, physical examination, x ray, ECG, uh, ABG analysis. Then under the medical management, uh, fractured ribs are generally treated conservatively with good pulmonary physiotherapy. Okay, we'll do the physiotherapy, rapid mobilization, and proper pain management. Sedation is usually done to relieve the pain and allow deep breathing and coughing. We all know, okay, sedatives will, uh, will be given to relieve the pain and to allow the deep breathing and coughing. Then others will do the physical uh, pulmonary physiotherapy, rapid mobilization, okay. Slowly, slowly the person will be able to mobilize and the pain management. Then alternative strategies are intercostal, uh, nerve block and ice over the fracture side. So uh, in order to relieve the pain, we, we can apply the ice, okay, over the fracture side to uh, allow the nerve block okay so that the person cannot perceive the pain then usually pain relief within seven to uh, five to seven days but most of the refractures heal in three to six weeks so uh, for this refracture there is uh, no need of and doing any uh, treatment uh, no need of doing any surgical treatment okay so it will relieve it will uh, heal by itself in three to six weeks within three to six weeks okay then the pain will not be there for uh, the pain will re relieve within five to seven days